of all we will try to develop right some relations with the derived property with the fundamental properties and uh, there are obviously two or three types of methods by which you can do that right in generally we are using mlt and finally we are equating the terms and finally we are writing one equation that is called dimensional homogeneity concept uh, in most of the cases we are following that but apart from that there are two other methods by they can also be applied to derive any kind of uh, you know formula out of the fundamental properties so as i said that what is dimensional analysis we say that dimensional analysis is a mathematical techniques used in research work for designing and conducting the model tests so a tool that basically helps one to get maximum information from minimum number of experiments and it deals with the dimensions of physical quantities involved in the phenomena can establish the scaling laws between models and prototypes so model uh, is basically small a replica of the actual device actual device is called prototype so when you are doing the experiment on and you want to find out what will the actual phenomena on the actual device you cannot put the exact size uh, size of device into internal that must size internal tax section will not be available so we have to create a model and model will be a small replica so with the help of dimensional analysis you can apply the scale law so we can define the length ratio so length of the model divided by the length of actual prototype will have certain uh, you know so we can say length of model is this much time of length of uh, prototype similarly velocity of model will be certain times of uh, you know velocity of the prototype like that we can you know fix certain uh, laws between uh, the geometrical flow dimensions right like velocity acceleration and length width with respect to the prototype so basically this method will be helpful for us so for this purpose we use the dimensional analysis now when we talk about the types of dimensions as i said that whenever we are measuring a physical quantities we are measuring with respect to some arbitrary fixed values and those fixed values basically in our case mlt mass length and time are the fixed values and those are called as fundamental properties and second properties are basically we can derive other form of properties with the help of fundamental properties so there are two types of dimensions one is called fundamental dimensions or we can say fundamental quantities and second is called as secondary dimensions or we can say derived quantities those we can derived with the help of uh, the fundamental dimensions so fundamental dimensions or fundamental quantities are the basic quantities for example time distance and mass so mlt usually be considered as mass length and time these are basically uh, the are the fundamental dimensions so next uh, is uh, secondary dimensions or we can say derived quantity these are the quantities which possess more than one fundamental dimensions it may have ml it may have mlt together right so uh, it may have a combination of lt or it may have a combination of m and l alone so that's why we saying that these are the quantity which possess more than one fundamental dimensions are known as secondary dimensions so secondary dimensions can be derived with the help of fundamental dimensions that's why we say them as derived quantities so for example velocity is denoted by uh, distance per unit time so when we look at the dimensions uh, scale in terms of fundamental properties it will have l and t into the consideration so if we go for acceleration it is called change in velocity with respect to time so one more variant will come with picture of time that will become l y t square when we talk about density it will have only m and l so mass per uh, unit uh, cubic length right or you can say kilogram per meter cube mass per unit volume is basically called density that's why ml cube so these are all basically called derived dimensions or derived quantities or we can say secondary dimensions so since velocity density acceleration involve more than one fundamental quantity so these are called as derived quantities i hope this might have clear to you Uh, so these are some of the examples of you know fundamental dimensions of fundamental dimensions are only these three so we can say length symbol is l a dimension is also l keep in mind mass is m so dimension is m and time is t dimension is t so it is have same sort of symbols as well as dimensions if you go to the derived uh, property these are the different kind of derived property if you talk about the area area will be either length or width right so length and width width will also be in meter length will also be in meter so it become meter square so the same dimensions becomes l square 
if we talk about the volume these are geometrical properties volume also will depend on the geometry of the object that is lq when you go for the kinematic uh, quantities where velocity acceleration these all terms will come to the pictures so when you talk about the velocity it is called distance per unit time so distance usually we measure into the meter and time divided by t so we can write nt minus 1 some of these you may are already knowing right angular velocity is basically per unit time basically we measure so this is t minus 1 and acceleration is the change of velocity with the time so one more time variant you add over here so this will become lt minus 2 angular acceleration double derivative of uh, the angular velocity plus with time so t minus 2 discharge already we know meter cube per second so we can write lq t minus 1 acceleration can also be written as meter per second square so this is also at t minus 2 kinetic viscosity usually is the ratio of uh, what we say the kinetic viscosity what we density or always we say that is a Centimeter square per second. So centimeter square is basically meter square, right? Uh, convert to that L square T minus one. If you go to the dynamic quantities, the moment dynamic comes to the picture, you will have a force, you will have a specific weight, you will have a dynamic viscosity, pressure intensity, modulus of velocity. These all factors will come into the dynamic uh, quantities. So corresponding dimensions are over here. So these all can be derived with the help of a fundamental. Uh, Uh, formulas of all these uh, values like is when we talk about specific weight it is the product of density into acceleration due to gravity if you multiply those two dimensions you will be getting the unit of specific weight right in dimensions form uh, similarly bulk modulus and these all all basically newton per meter square usually we say that right uh, the dimension of k and e either you say k or e both are representing modulus of elasticity k represent the bulk modulus of elasticity usually for liquid case we measure uh, in terms of k and on solid case we always or metal case we always measure in terms of capital e which is having dimension ml minus 1 t minus 2 when we talk about surface tension it, talk, it it basically works on the surface area right so surface energy we used to say for that unit is uh, m t minus 2 and similarly for shear stress you can say work power torque and moment and these are the uh, majorly used dimensions that we are using in various uh, applications and corresponding uh, you know dimensions are given notation also given so no need to mug up these things right this you can derive directly if you know the formula let's go for dimensional homogeneity when we talk about dimensional homogeneity dimensional homogeneity is the concept right by which we can balance the units on both side of any kind of formula if i say force is equal to mass into acceleration if i'm writing the dimension of force this side left side and this should be exactly equal to the mass into acceleration product dimension so that kind of concept is called dimensional homogeneity so dimensional homogeneity means dimensions of each terms in an equation on both sides are the same if the dimension of each term on both sides of an equation are the same we can say that that equation is dimensionally homogeneous equation so for example uh, this is the s is equal to ut plus half at square usually we say that so s is the basically distance and distance is measured in lead meter so we can say l and when talk about u to ut that is velocity into time and we see the dimension of velocity is meter per second and to second this will cancel out you will get only l and if you talk about half at square if you do it you will get again l so anyway if you add it you will get 2l 2 is a constant so positive is not going to make any sense so this side it is l this side also l so we can say it is a dimensionally homogeneous equation uh, so like that for any sort of formula you can find out whether the given equation is dimensionally homogeneous or not by equating uh, the dimensions on each side so they are having same power uh, like uh, left hand side you say l to the power 1 right side also it is l to the power 1 so powers of fundamental dimensions are the same right on both the side of this equation we can say this equation as dimensionally homogeneous equation so methods of dimensions uh, dimensional analysis uh, there are two methods right one is called relays method and is called uh, the buckingham pi theorem and most of the case in your syllabus buckingham pi theorem need to be explored right in detail uh, so when in any kind of physical phenomena number of variables are known to us we can arrange them variables right in different forms and, uh, and finally we can derive a formula which would relate all which will account for all these uh, variables 
So, if the number of variables involved in a physical phenomena are known, then the relation among the variables can be determined by the following two methods. One is called release method, and is called Buckingham Pi theorem. And basically, in most of the cases, we uh, follow the Buckingham Pi theorem because it's the simplest way of relating uh, the different kind of variables. You will come to know that. So, first method is basically release method of dimension analysis. So, let's suppose. Uh, that x is some variable which basically depends on these all factors. These are also variables x1, x2, x3. Then we can relate x is equal to function of x1, x2, x3. Why we are saying that? We are saying that x basically depends on all these variables x1, x2, x3. So that's why we can write x is a function of x1, x2, x3. So this can further be written as uh, x is equal to, if we put the equality sign, we can put uh, a constant term here. So this is the constant term which has been introduced over here. And uh, we can write these all like x1 to the power a into x to the power b into x to x3 to the power c. Where k is a constant and a, b, c are arbitrary powers, right? Then according to Rayleigh's theorem, these a, b, c are to be determined right, by comparing the fun, uh, powers of fundamental dimensions on both sides, right? So you can write the dimension of this left hand side uh, quantity and you write the dimensions of all these variables on which it is dependent on then you compare the you know powers of the fundamental uh, dimensions that is mlt on both sides if you compare you can get easily the values of abc after getting the value of abc you return back and put the value over here you get a single expression of this variable right in terms of the other parameters but there is the limitations, right, particularly for release method. Release method uh, will be more complex or laborious if variables are more than the number of fundamental dimensions. So it is basically suitable only for the equation which is involving uh, three uh, variables, not more than that. So like if the equation is in this form, right, only there are three variables on which this certain variable is depending on, we can easily find the expression. If my number of variables are increasing beyond the fundamental dimension, fundamental dimensions are three. If my variables are becoming four or five, then it's a much more laborious. It is very difficult to find out the relation. You can find out the relations, but those relations will be in terms of additional variables, right? So you'll not get exact dimens, exact you know formula for any kind of phenomena, but it may be in terms of some other parameters. So we'll take one example of Rayleigh's method. So let's suppose. Uh, this is one sort of equation that we are going to get is so resistance force r of a supersonic plane during flight can be considered as dependent upon these all variables length of the aircraft counted by l velocity of air viscosity of air air density bulk modulus of air express the functional relationship between the variables and resisting force so we have to express resistance force in terms of all these variables. If you look at the variables, uh, there are three uh, plus two, five. Two to five variables are there. That means the variable number is more than the fundamental dimensions. So even though we can apply the relation method, but problem is that we will not get a direct relation right in terms of all these things. But we will be getting expression in terms of some other parameters, right? Like either in terms of density or either in terms of bulk modulus. We will be expressing this or we will be expressing in terms of velocity or dyn dynamic viscosity or we can say viscosity. So let's start with problem. So as per this, we can say R is uh, dependent on all these parameters, right? You look at all these parameters. There are basically five variables total we are looking for. So as number of variables are more, we have uh, no direct uh, expression, but we will express in some other form. So this equation right further can be written in this way right so this a is basically a constant that you are incorporating is either you can incorporate capital k why we are not writing capital k because we are utilizing the capital k here for bulk model so that's why constant a is basically being introduced over here so a is not a area keep in mind a is a non-dimensional constant and all these variables right we can write powers a b c d and E, and finally we write the fundamental uh, dimension. So resistance is basically force, and for force we know the dimension. So we can put the dimension over here, and corresponding length is L, and velocity, right, and viscosity, and density, and finally uh, this is bulk modulus. 
after putting all this we can equate the powers of mld on both sides right this side and this side you will get all these three equations now problem is that you are having total five different variables and uh, we can only find out maximum three so what we will do we will express the remaining parameters right in terms of any two of these variables now we need to find out what are the basically uh, much more demanding or we can say most dominating variables so geometry uh, length length basically is much more uh, you know dominating property that you cannot avoid basically when any object is putting in the air and also flow velocity is also one of the what we say uh, dominating property without that you know you will not get any kind of forces experienced by the object this is also dominating property density also we cannot basically avoid right so only two things are left with either you can express in terms of mu or k so these are the two variables right in terms of this you can express the things in terms of c and e right but this length and velocity and density you cannot uh, basically uh, neglect because these are the dominating uh, properties right uh, when we are uh, talking about the forces so when we are solving these three equations we can express uh, like uh, what is left with e b and uh, d in terms of c and e you can do that so so we can we can express this so here you change this a b d in terms of c and e we are expressing this so when you are expressing this you can express a b d in terms of c and e so you will get all these equations right d is equal to 1 minus c minus e b is equal to 2 minus c minus 2e a is equal to you solve this you will get only 2 minus c so after getting all these values if you return back to the equation number 1 which is over here you substitute the value of a b c d e over here the moment you put all these values you can write in this way if you rearrange the terms right you just you can write a l square b square rho this is basically common and all other parameters this is also in terms of c you look at here this is rho mu l uh, and v also is there uh, to the power c but we look at here some minus is there so better you write this as mu divided by rho v l to the power c and this term uh, you can write v k upon k upon rho v square right to the power e so you can write in this way so outside is rho v square l square this is basically a force equation dynamic head rho v square l square a is constant and in bracket you can express these two terms in terms of c and e and further if you want to remove this c and e power you can define a function so we can say the resistance force is equal to constant rho l square v square the function of these two parameters if you just closely look at these two parameters right this is basically one divided by reynolds number right because rho v l upon mu we usually say reynolds number and if you look at this this will be become mark number right mark number we have not defined the mark number because it was not useful for us so this is a mark number so we can say the uh, resistance force acting on the aircraft when it's traveling in the air uh, is basically a function of a uh, reynolds number as well as mark number so like that you can express uh, the dimensions using the relish method so you might have seen that uh this is becoming much more complex if your number of variables are going uh, more than the number of fundamental dimensions so this is the primary you know method of relating uh, the dimension for any kind of physical phenomena next one is buckingham pi theorem this is much more uh, famous and universally adopted way uh, of deriving the dimensions so as per this uh, this state that if there are n variables right independent or dependent in a physical phenomena and if these variables contain m fundamental dimensions usually fundamental dimensions are three you cannot go for four if these contain m fundamental dimensions then the variables are arranged into n minus m dimensionless groups and this dimensionless groups is known as pi terms and each pi term contains m plus one variables out of which m are repeating variables m r repeating variable some variables will be there they will be repeating variables but they will have m fundamental dimensions mld so statement is clear if there are n number of variables which may be independent or dependent in a kind of any kind of physical phenomena these variables uh, obviously every variable will have three fundamental dimensions 
they can be arranged into n minus m non dimensional groups right those non dimensional groups is known as pi terms let's see how to how to find out these lacking variables as i said that every pi term will have m fundamental dimension out of which those uh, you know m plus 1 variables and that m are repeating variables let's see what are the repeating variable how to select the repeating variables there there is certain rule so method of selecting the repeating variables first and most important uh, you know point is the dependent variable should not be selected as repeating variable so let's suppose you are expressing you are finding out the formula for air resistance just now we have seen for uh, relative method air resistance depend on rho v l and mu k then r is dependent variable that cannot be considered as repeating variable keep in mind so dependent variable should not be selected as repeating variable second point the dependent variable should be chosen in such a way that one variable contains a uh, geometrical property other variable contains flow property and third variable contains fluid property so this basically uh, we are talking about repeating variables so don't say like this it is a repeating variable this we are talking about repeating variable so the repeating variable should be chosen in such a way that one variable contains geometrical property when we talk about geometrical property we will talk about length width right height and other variable contains flow property when we talk about flow property it may have density it may have viscosity and fluid property and sorry flow property velocity basically velocity acceleration of flow property and fluid property we'll talking about the density viscosity all terms will come into the picture here so repeating variable will have uh, these all three very three things geometrical property flow property and fluid property for example geometrical property length diameter height and flow property velocity acceleration and fluid properties are viscosity and density next point the repeating variables should not form a dimensionless group together so if you combine those repeating variables they should not form uh, they should not form the dimensionless group and next one the repeating variables should have the same number of fundamental dimensions if you combine all those repeating variables should have mlt together in that right the meaning of this that and last point no two repeating variables should have the same fundamental dimensions so you cannot like like put a length and length as two repeating variable right if there are length and height both are giving as two dependent uh, uh, independent variables you cannot consider both as a repeating variable you will have this thing in your mind one will be geometrical property another will be flow property and last one will be a fluid property when you are selecting the repeating variables so as we look at the buckingham pi theorem buckingham pi theorem says that if there are n variables right they have m fundamental dimensions we can arrange them into n minus m non dimensional groups and those non dimensional groups are known as pi terms so consider a phenomena described by an equation this is one equation where g is the basically variable and they depend on these all independent variables x1 x2 x3 and up to xn where x1 x2 x3 xn are the independent variables so if this all independent variables right contains m number of Uh, independent dimension or you can say fundamental dimensions right required to specify this x1 x2 x2 then one can come up with the uh, relation of some sort of this you can find out the number of non dimensional group by putting n minus m right total number of n minus m so those are known as pi term so this same expression can be written as g pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 and up to pi n minus m is equal to 0 where these all pi are known as non dimensional parameters or we can say the pi terms so once we have decided these non dimensional terms we need to find out the form of these non dimensional terms in terms of fundamental properties right in terms of n l m and l m and t and we will put all these values over here we can get a single functional relationship which will be describing our relationship between the variable and independent variable So we'll see the example. Uh, so in other words, the phenomena can be described by n minus the m number of non-dimensional parameters. So this is the mathematical expression. So let the above case will have x2, x3, x4 are the repeating variables. So you look at here, x1 is the same. Uh, you know, what do we say? Whatever variable is there that you have to take inside the bracket. 
So x1 is uh, we are not selecting as a repeating variable. So next to that x2, x3, and x4 are the repeating variables. And if fundamental dimensions are three only, right? Then each pi term is given as x2, x3. These are the repeating variables, right? So they will always be coming. And what is left with? So left with is x1 is left with, and one more parameter you can consider beyond x, x4 that is x5. And then you can go to x n because total variables we are considering around x n. So x one is the variable that depends on all other independent variables. So this cannot be chosen as a repeating variable. Next to this, any three you know independent variables will be considered as repeating variables. But considering those factors like right, geometrical flow and absolute property, so let's suppose x two, x three, x four are the repeating variables. So we can write pi terms like pi one as x two, x three, x four, and in terms of x one. A1, B1, and uh, whatever uh, you can put. C1 you can put. Why A1 is repeating? Better C1 here C2. Right. Similarly here also C you put C. So C1, X1, and pi2 can be written as X2, A2, X3, X4, C2, and X5. Similarly, if you go to the pi n minus one, that can be written in this form. And finally, X n is the last independent variable. So we can write the non-dimensional. Uh, uh you know pi terms in this way in terms of repeating variables these are repeating variables now one by one we will solve all these right in terms of fundamental dimensions and finally put all these values in in the fundamental equation so each equation is solved by principle of dimensional homogeneity and the values of a1 b1 c1 etc are obtained and final result in the form of this we can write pi1 in terms of pi2 pi3 pi4 pi n minus 1 similarly pi2 can also be written as pi1 pi3 Pi four and up to pi n minus one. So like that we can express the terms. So this is the way. We will see one example. Then we will come to know exactly what is the, this thing. So take this problem. Same problem. The resistance for R of a supersonic uh, plane during flight can be considered as dependent upon length of aircraft, velocity of aircraft, air uh, viscosity, density, bulk modulus of air. Express the functional relationship. Between the variables and resisting force. So if you just look at look at this, uh, you know, entire data, this are dependent on five different uh, variables, right? So five different variables are there. So if you put this also inside, total six uh, variables will be there inside the bracket. But number of fundamental dimensions are only three, MLT, that you know. So number of variables are six, and number of fundamental dimensions are three. So they can be arranged into n minus m number of non-dimensional groups. So we can say six minus three total three dimensionless uh, terms. You will be finding it out, right? So you will have only three pi terms that need to be solved. When you are talking about repeating variables, now you look at the uh, phenomena. So geometrical property you are having only L. Flow property you are having only velocity, right? And if you go go for fluid property, you are having two basically uh, dynamic viscosity. And uh, density is also there, and bulk modulus is there. But more dominating property is basically density, so we have to go for density. So like that you can go. So we can write the same expression R is a function of L, B, mu, rho, k, which can further be written as one functional relationship in which we are taking this dependent variable also inside the bracket R, L, B, mu, rho, k. This is equal to one zero. This is equation number one. So the total number of variables are six. Number of fundamental dimension are three. So number of dimensionless group that is called pi terms are three. So we can express this equation as function of pi one, pi two, pi three is equal to zero. This is equation number two. This is the final expression we have to express over here. So number of repeating variables, obviously three. What are the repeating variables? I told you one geometrical property, length, one flow property, velocity, and fluid property. Fluid is having three properties here, but more dominating is density. So we have considered the density as repeating variables. So thus, pi one, pi two, pi three can be written into this form. So pi one is equal to l to the power a one, b to the power b one, rho to the power c one, and r is the dependent variable. And pi two remaining terms mu and k will come into picture. So, so these three pi terms need to be solved with the help of the concept of dimensional homogeneity. So these are the non-dimensional non terms. If you talk about pi term, if you are writing the dimensions, you will have m zero, l zero, t zero, m to the power zero into l to the power zero. Into t to the power zero because it's not having any dimensions, but this side you are having dimensions. You can put the value of MLT. So if you are going to solve this, right, each pi term. So if you talk about just pi one, 
So pi one m zero l zero t zero. This is the length. This is the velocity. This is the density, and this is the resistance force. So you can put the value of in terms of m l t. Then you equate the powers of m l t on both sides. If you are equating the power of just the m, you just look at here. It is m is having in this bracket and in this bracket. So you can direct by c one plus one is equal to zero. One equation. So you get c one out of this. Similarly, you can compare l alone. Then you can compare t alone. You will get the values of e one, b one, c one. The moment you know the value of e one, b one, c one, you can substitute the value into the pi one term over here, and you can find out the final form of pi one. If you do so, you can write in this way. So this becomes pi one is equal to r divided by the rho l square b square. This is the first pi one. Similarly, you can go for the pi two. You write the expression. Equate the powers of m l t. You will get the a two b two c two. So the moment you substitute the value of this, you will get the second pi term, which is coming around mu upon rho l b. This is the second pi term. Same treatment you can do for the third pi term. You go for the third pi term. You can write all the value in terms of a three b three c three. If you equate the power of m l t, you will get this expression. Finally, pi three can be. Find it out. So now you are having on all pi one, pi two, pi three. You can substitute in equation number one. So this is in equation number two. Sorry, not one, two. That is function of pi one, pi two, pi three is equal to zero. So you can substitute the value of pi one, pi two, pi three over here. So these are the values. But we need only expression for this. So you can take out this entire term outside, and this can be expressed in terms of some other function. So you take this term outside r upon rho l square b square. So remaining uh, all these two quantity along with this f can be written as some function of mu upon rho v l and k upon b square y r. Again, I said that this is a Reynolds number. This is called Mach number, right? So we can say the resistance force acting on a supersonic aircraft, right, is a function of Reynolds number and Mach number, and this is the dynamic phase, dynamic head basically. Rho v square into l square. This is geometrical dimension. We can say the area, plane form area of the aircraft uh, will be over here, l square. And rho is density. This is the kinetic head half rho v square. Usually we say as if you multiply it, divide by something, it is not going to change the dimension. Keep in mind. That's why if I add here half, I will getting the same formula. If you are finding out the force, you will write half rho v square area into some coefficient, right? Some coefficient. So if I multiply here half, it is not going to change the dimensions, right? Basically, or if I divide by two also, or if I multiply by two also, that is also not going to change the dimensions. Keep in mind. Uh, so that is not going to uh, change anything. So I can add here half, and I can get the expression which, which traditionally we are using with. So like that, you can carry out the uh, Buckingham Pie theorem. Uh, you know, dimensional analysis. So take this problem. will go slightly faster the efficiency of a fan depends on density dynamic viscosity angular velocity diameter of rotor and the discharge express efficiency in terms of dimensionless parameters so look at this is we are talking about fan when you are rotating the fan fan will require right the work on it so shaft rotation is one of the important property right and as well as fluid property if we talk about fluid property influencing will be the density the so density is there and uh, diameter of rotor that is called geometrical property will be considered diameter of rotor so these basically i am fixing as uh, repeating variables how many variables are there put together if you look at efficiency 1 2 3 4 5 5 basically the variables are there how many fundamental dimension 3 you will get only basically two uh, pi term so like that you can uh, decide at the early stage So, not five. I think six variables six. are there. Yeah. So six. That means three. So we can write efficiency as a function of all these three. So we can express in a similar way what we have done in first example. So F one, all this total six are there. So three pi terms directly we can find out. So three pi terms. So we can go for three pi terms. We can write repeating variable. I was talking about right angular velocity because we have to rotate it. So that is one of the dominating property. And density of medium is also needed, right? This is this we're talking about fluid medium and geometrical property or diameter of disc. These are the repeating and most important variables. Those are called repeating variables, and we will re express remaining whatever parameters are left with. They will be kept into the pi one, pi two, pi three. Then we'll use the same thing. Dimensional homogeneity will solve pi one, pi two, pi three. Then we 
come to the this equation and put over here what expression you are going to get you are going to get only expression for efficiency that you take out an expression in terms of phi so that's what is given here first phi term if you solve this can be written in this way you put mlt you solve it you will get first term so you look at phi term itself is efficiency this is not dimensional term and if you go for second phi term we and we are solving for mu uh, you will be getting second phi term as mu upon rho w d square this is second phi term if you go for third phi term if you solve this you will get third phi term as q upon d square w so now you are having all these three put in equation number 2 the moment you put you will get this kind of expression but we are looking for expression for efficiency alone take this outside the moment you take this outside this functional relation will be written in terms of phi and all these two parameters you can capture inside this is the final answer so like that you can derive the expression using the buckingham phi theorem i hope this might be clear to you so in addition to this i am giving you one more problem this you try by yourself so now i'm open for your queries if you are having any queries you start